uh, something you alluded to, which is the pros and cons of a particular candidate. Well, what to you as a critic of Trump, what to you are um, the pros, the strengths of uh, Donald Trump and what to you are his biggest weaknesses? The strengths of Trump, see how I can frame them in a way that is both accurate and, and accurately assesses my, my feeling about it. And, and can listen. be taken out of context most mas masterfully through the clipping process. Yes. David Pakman recently appeared on the Lex Fridman podcast, and during the show, Lex Fridman asked David Pakman to name both the pros and cons of Donald Trump. As usual, David Pakman gave some really thoughtful answers, and honestly, I found David's take pretty interesting. In this video, we'll go through a few clips from that episode where David Pakman breaks down his views, and I'll share some of my thoughts too. Let's dive into it. Trump's strengths are mostly superficial and in terms of presentation. Trump was able to, I, I call it a grift. Some on the right say he's just so good at relating to different types of people. Trump as a rich guy from New York City was able to convince people that he spent most of his life trying to be kept isolated from, that he had their best interests in mind, that he knew why they weren't doing well in the 2016 economy, and that he had solutions that he was going to bring forward. The truth is, he never really liked those people. And as soon as they weren't useful to him for a brief period of time, he, you know, that, that love affair with his followers stopped. And then now it's back that he needs them again. He didn't really understand the causes of the problems that those folks were experiencing. And his solutions were laughable, right? Like Jared was going to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in year one. He was going to replace Obamacare in 2017. Yeah, things that were never going anywhere, anywhere. Um, but what he did really well was he put up a united front of, I know what is ailing you. I know how to fix it. And I know how to fix it, I guess, because he's a businessman and he's been above the fray of politics for so long, knowing how to use political donations to his advantage. He called that smart, et cetera. I think that's his greatest strength. Why do you say that the the the, the Jared plan for Israel and Palestine and the plan for healthcare to improve Obamacare, why, why do you say that's laughable? Well, only someone, I would include the North Korea plan as well, which I'm glad to talk about. Only someone who doesn't know anything about the size and scope of these issues could so arrogantly say that they could solve them in that way and on that time frame. I'm all for optimism and and bringing a new face to things absolutely w without a doubt. But, you know, a wall with Mexico that Mexico will pay for at the end of my first term. I I know there are people who believed it because they would call into my show and say I'm voting for Trump because of it. If you're enjoying this kind of content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. But it's hard to believe that anybody serious would fall for that unless you were deliberately wanting to just believe whatever was being fed to you, or you just hadn't ever thought about these issues before. The healthcare plan, you know, in 2017, they proposed one would have led to 24 million or so people ending up without healthcare. It didn't go anywhere because it was so terrible. And then in August of 2020, Trump said, in, in two weeks, I'm going to finally have my healthcare proposal. It's 2023. We, we still never got it. You know, with all of these things, when you think them through, it was just sort of arrogance. And I get the perspective of, I want optimism. And I liked that optimism. Mm -hmm. It worked. I mean, fair. A lot of people saw it and liked it. As someone who followed a lot of those, those issues closely, they seemed, of course, like impossible promises. Well, it's a double-edged sword. So to push back a little bit, if we look at the things I have um, a little bit more knowledge about, which is uh, the space of artificial intelligence. There's a company called DeepMind and there's a company called OpenAI that uh, were laughed at for a long time when they were talking about that they're going to solve intelligence. And now they've made, um, especially DeepMind, and now most recently OpenAI with GPT, they've made progress that most of the AI community would not have imagined they'd be able to make everything from AlphaGo beating the world uh, world Go champion, just all the different steps and progress that I can get into were surprised everybody. And they are legitimately uh, fearlessly pursuing 
the task of solving intelligence. The other aspect, he gets a lot of criticism now, but another example is Elon Musk. Uh, in I can say a lot of things like SpaceX, so commercial space flight. He was laughed at for a long time that that's possible. Uh, same thing with autopilot in Tesla, autonomous vehicles. His approach was harshly criticized by all the experts and uh, still criticized, to this day, deeply criticized. And I, as a person that I believe objectively can look at the progress of autopilot as a semi-autonomous vehicle system has been incredibly surprising. So the reason I mention that is sometimes it feels like you need the guy or the gal who, who makes those uh, preposterous, ambitious statements, like we're going to solve healthcare this year. Like, and then and then there's experts like yourself that are looking, thinking, have you read anything about the history of this? Israel Palestine is a good is a good example of that. If you want to make the argument that Elon Musk or the folks behind OpenAI and ChatGPT are visionaries, sure, that makes sense. But Donald Trump, he's not really a visionary, more like a grifter or con man. Take healthcare for example. Trump kept saying he'd come out with a new plan to replace Obamacare in two weeks, but it never happened. David Pakman has pointed this out a lot, and he's spot on. Trump's real talent is in his ability to present himself, not necessarily in delivering on policies. One thing you can't ignore about Trump is his ability to speak for hours and keep a crowd engaged, even if what he's saying is all over the place. Whether you like him or not, that's impressive. He's also got a knack for dominating conversations, which can come across as strong, though it's not always a positive trait. What's interesting about Trump is that, despite his flaws, to his supporters, he comes off as genuine. For example, when he refused to get a dog just to seem presidential, it made him stand out from the typical politician who might do things just for appearances. He's not the type to go to the South and suddenly start tar talking with a Southern accent, like some politicians do. That kind of thing actually turns people off. Of course, Trump isn't completely authentic. He definitely puts on a show sometimes, like when he pretends to be deeply religious. Does anyone really believe he's a regular churchgoer? Probably not. But he doesn't try to be everything to everyone, and that's something other politicians could learn from. It's less about trying to be a jerk like Trump, and more about being straightforward with who you are. People can tell when you're being fake, and that's what Trump managed to avoid, for better or worse. Do you know there's a history there? <laughs> Do you realize how complicated, how many people have tried, how many people have failed, how many millions of people hate each other in this, in this little uh, place, in this, in this land? That, like, sometimes the expertise can really weigh you down. So it's sort of to push back, sometimes you have to have the, almost be naive and stupid and just rush in with an optimism in order to actually make some progress. I agree with you 100%. I think it's interesting that all of the examples you gave of of successes are from the technology space. Not politics, yes. W not from politics, which I mean, listen, yeah. I would love to be able to make headway on some of these issues more quickly without a doubt. I do think at some point though, when it comes down to voting and saying, one of these people is going to be ostensibly in charge for four years through all of the departments and secretaries and choices that they make, we do want to apply some level of realism with the with the understanding that your examples are from the tech space and they're good examples. There's there's no question about it. One th uh, thing I'll add to this, I recently read Bradley Hope's new book about North Korea. Um, and it's really about an activist um, who it doesn't even really matter, but the in the background of the book. What do you think about David Pakman's take on the pros and cons of Donald Trump or Lex Fridman's thoughts on the matter? I just shared a small clip, but the full discussion is about three and a half hours long. You can check it out on Lex Fridman's YouTube channel. Leave me a comment with your thoughts on Lex, David Pakman, or Donald Trump. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.